Well, how amazing is this day? It's a beautiful day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this day. Uh, we praise you and lift you up as the highest authority. And all God's people said... the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who takes the whole world with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all clap this morning. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. It's amazing, isn't it, what God has done for us, you know? And it's by His grace that we've been saved. Amen. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, for your mercy, that we're not condemned because of what Jesus did, but Lord, we're alive in you. Amen.
forgiven. I'm forgiven. Wash you where the shaken. before the throne room of grace in a time of need it's, and to worship him in spirit and in truth and today we're going to worship him from the fruit of our lips it says because of what Jesus has done for us so I just want you to picture what the Lord has done for you and how amazing he is so to just focus on the things of God and his goodness and his mercy amen
picture of Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf. A righteous judge, a holy and righteous judge, the Lord God Almighty, above all things and in all things and through all things. And this is our advocate, Jesus, the great I am, the King, the risen Lord, in whom we have no fear. You are holy, Lord, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. 
draw all unto me, says the Lord. For sin, or sickness, or disease, I will draw all unrighteousness unto me, says the Lord. For I am the great I am. I am the King and the risen Lord. I am in all things and through all things. And my name be glorified in this place and throughout the nations and throughout the earth. Because I am a righteous judge. I am a righteous King and worthy of all praise. So today, praise me with all your heart. Praise me with everything that's in you. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and praise his holy name. Whoa, and all God's people say. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, amen? amen. All the time. Amen. You may be seated in the house today, and we're going to come around the word and the communion today. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Very difficult for us men. There's a choice of two up here. Which one do I take? What I will share with you at the beginning is a true story and then what will follow that's even truer because it will be God's word. On a Saturday night in 1998, Azita Millennium went for a jog with one of her dogs. During the jog, the dog stopped to smell and scratch at the dirt 
on the trail. She went to investigate and saw two feet poking out of the ground. Then she heard the infant cry. Melanian started digging and found a baby wrapped in a blue towel. Lifting him up in her arms, she cleared dirt from his nose and mouth. Please don't die, she said. I will never leave you. I love you. As she waited for police and paramedics to arrive, Melanian tried to comfort the baby. He grabbed my wrist and stopped crying. It was very emotional. What kind of sick human would do something like that? He still had his umbilical cord hanging from his stomach. The baby's body temperature had fallen to 80 degrees. In time, he made a remarkable recovery. The neonatal medical director at the hospital called it really almost a miracle. Nurses named him Baby Christian. In time, the baby was adopted. His parents named him Matthew Christian Whitaker. When he was 17, Matthew learned he was adopted and eventually was told how he was found. I'm here today. I've lived a great life. I was adopted into a great family, Whitaker said. I couldn't ask my parents for any more. Twenty years after she found baby Christian, Melanian and Whitaker were tearfully and joyously reunited. They shared the story of their lives since that fateful day. And then Melanian took Whitaker to the hiking trail where she'd found him. Matthew stared through a chain link fence at the spot. This could have been my grave, he said, to which his rescuer replied, you were wanted. We are wanted. God spoke and all his word began our blueprint for life. I have said what I would do and I will do it for I alone am God. We are made in the image of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit according to their likeness. God sent Jesus and Jesus came willingly knowing all that was required of him. A relationship of love and trust set from the beginning. Jesus came to seek and he came to save. And there was another S and that will come at the back. John the Baptist was sent from God and he came for a witness to Jesus that all through him everyone might believe. It is written, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am for you, not against you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are his workmanship. You are the apple of his eye. You shall never perish and neither shall anyone snatch you out of my or my father's hand. My father and I are one. We are children of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that as children we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. An heir of everything our Father owns and as a joint heir with Christ, whatever Jesus is entitled to, we are also. We being in Christ have the Holy Spirit in our heart and are guaranteed all of God's word and all that he's spoken. For all my promises in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. Our condition might change daily. Our attitude, our emotional setup, our physical setup. 
But our position in Christ is never going to change. It's sealed to be that way. Praise the Lord for that. Our Abba Father's love for us is a perfect love. Depending upon the school you went to, agape or agape. It's an unconditional love, never changing. We are a so loved one. And that was paid for by Jesus at the cross. We have unmerited, undeserved, unearned love, all full of grace. And that grace is super abounding, super abundant. And we have favour. As I said earlier, Jesus came with three S's. Two I gave you, to seek and to save. The third is he came to send. That's us. We're not going to have to go unless you want to, knocking on doors. Most of those that he wants saved, we will cross their paths or they will cross our paths in God's good timing. He's the one in charge. We're the ones that he wants to use. What a blessing. What a blessing. And what a message we have to share with them. All we need to do is to believe it in our heart and speak it with our mouth. And what does the Word of God say? Believe in your heart and speak it, and so shall it be. We love him because he loved us first. What we have within us and we can outwork it when we believe and open our mouth, is the greatest message ever told. It's in us. Speak it. As we have communion, In the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and in, in Corinthians, where it shares the communion message that Jesus had with his disciples on the night before the cross, he said, this is my body. And it is. This is his body, his flesh, offered up for our sake, broken for our sake. Believe it in your heart, and whatever ails you, whatever is not right, you just close your eyes and see Jesus on the cross and his body taking all that the enemy could throw, that could, the enemy could do. He took it all out of love for us. His flesh, his body. And his blood. His blood of the New Testament, the New Covenant. Blood speaks. We go back to the very first part of the Bible and it says, his blood, blood speaks and his blood speaks everything. We're delivered, we're set free, we're made whole. We are Christ's and no one can take that from us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We are blessed, well and truly. Thank you.